Good evening, everybody. A very warm welcome to all of you to St Mildred's this evening for this opportunity for everyone in our group of churches, the Tenterden, Rother and Oxney Benefice, and our brothers and sisters who are part of churches together in Tenterden and the surrounding area, and our congregation who join us from home this evening through the live stream to come together and to celebrate a great event in our nation's history, the coronation of King Charles III. The choir have been rehearsing this afternoon and I have to say I think we are in for a real treat. I am hoping that all of you here and all of you here and all of you at home will all together raise this roof as we sing our praises to God the Father and give thanks at this time. We're going to keep a moment of silence to remember that we are here in the presence of God. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, and to pray for our King, that both now and always, God may grant him wisdom and grace for his ministry among us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, May we, with Charles our King, give ourselves to the service of God and others, that both our churches and wider communities may flourish and be places of trust and friendship. This evening's worship will proceed without announcement, and I ask that you stand for the hymns but otherwise, please remain seated.
Blessed are you, sovereign God and King of kings. To you be glory and praise forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your glory is proclaimed in all the world. You gave the Christ as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of his spirit, you established us as a royal priesthood. Enlighten the hearts of Charles, our king, and strengthen his spirit, so that we, with him, may bear witness to your truth and proclaim your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Charles was born in 1948 in Buckingham Palace during the reign of his grandfather, King George VI. After the king's death in 1952, Charles's mother acceded to the throne and became Queen Elizabeth II. This made Charles the heir apparent, the person who would succeed the queen as the next monarch. Charles attended his mother's coronation when he was just four years old. He was one of the first people to be invited and received his own 
specially illustrated invitation. Soon it was time for Charles to start his education. Initially, he was educated at Buckingham Palace by a governess. At the time, this was the tradition for children who were destined to become king or queen. However, as Charles approached his eighth birthday, he experienced another first. Instead of continuing to be educated at home, Charles began to attend a local school with other children. He was the first heir apparent to attend school rather than be educated by a private tutor. The school's head teacher encouraged Charles to join the football team so that he could play as an equal on the pitch with his classmates.
As Charles progressed in his education, he achieved another first. After his A-levels, he began a degree at Cambridge University, studying a range of subjects, including history and archaeology. He also spent some time studying the Welsh language and history at the University College of Wales in Aberystwyth. When Charles graduated from Cambridge, he was the first British heir apparent to earn a university degree. During Queen Elizabeth II's long reign, Charles, the Prince of Wales, led an active royal life and completed thousands of engagements and visits. One of these was particularly significant. In 1995, Charles became the first member of the royal family to visit the Republic of Ireland in an official capacity. 20 years later, Charles and Camilla would visit the Republic of Ireland again, which the British Embassy described as an important step in promoting peace and reconciliation. In 1970, Charles joined the House of Lords. In 1974, he made his first speech from the floor, making him the first royal to do so since 1884.
Charles's charitable work has always been very important to him. He founded the United Kingdom's leading youth charity, the Prince's Trust, in 1976, and has been involved in hundreds of other charities as patron, president, or member. Charles's work with these other charities has led to further firsts. In the 1980s, he was one of the first international figures to speak out against human rights abuses that were happening in Romania under its dictator, Nicolae Ceausescu. Recently, in January 2020, Charles became the first United Kingdom patron of the International Rescue Committee, a charity that aims to help refugees and those who have been displaced by war, persecution, or natural disaster.
In July 1981, Charles married Diana, Princess of Wales, and they went on to have two sons, William and Harry. In another first, Charles was the first royal father to be present at the birth of his children. Sadly, Charles and Diana divorced 15 years after they married, and Diana died in a car crash the following year. In April 2005, Charles married his second wife, Camilla, in Windsor Guildhall, becoming the first member of the British royal family to marry in a civil ceremony. On the 8th of September 2022, Charles's mother, Queen Elizabeth II, died, and Charles acceded to the throne at the age of 73. This made him the oldest person to become a British monarch, and the first British monarch in 70 years. In his first speech on becoming king, Charles spoke of his love for his mother. Three months later, in his first Christmas speech as king, he spoke about the power of faith and service, his own personal faith in God, and his respect for people of all faiths. Yesterday was the second time that Charles attended the coronation of a British monarch, and of course, his first coronation as king. During the ceremony, he made promises before God to rule with justice and mercy and pledged to put God and his people first.
prayer and faith in God was firmly part of Charles's coronation. He has spoken many times about his Christian faith and also his respect for people of all faiths. Many churches and places of worship around the world are praying for Charles at this time. The support of personal prayer is something that will not be a first for him, for he has prayed and encouraged prayer in others throughout his life. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. A dispute also arose among the disciples as to which of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on the thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. As we gather in celebration of the coronation of King Charles, we pray that you will bless him richly in the years ahead. Guide him and all the members of the royal family with your peaceable wisdom. Faithful God, fill them with your hope and joy. We pray for all who serve our local community. 
May they be ambassadors of goodwill, building friendships and cooperation. Faithful God, fill them with your hope and joy. We ask your blessing on our homes and families, on our schools, children and young people. May our neighbourhoods be places of hospitality, peace and trust. Faithful God, fill them with your hope and joy. We pray for older people in our communities and especially the isolated and housebound, that they may be known, honoured and cherished. Faithful God, fill them with your hope and joy. We commend to your care the sick and vulnerable and any who despair. May the joy of our nation's celebration renew them in heart and mind. Faithful God, fill them with your hope and joy. We give thanks for the places of worship in the Tenterden, Rother and Oxney Benefice for the places of worship in this town of Tenterden and all who come to the places of prayer, whether in times of joy or sorrow, for all who find these places of worship places of healing and hope. Lord, transform our lives by your grace. And as you have called us to your service, make us worthy of our calling. Faithful God, fill them with your hope and joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. kneeling before the throne of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We're now going to stand and sing together our final hymn, during which a collection will be taken.
for our final prayer. I'd like to thank everyone here for coming this evening, and I do think you have indeed raised the roof. And as such, you, are, you have earned yourselves at least one cup of tea, which will be served at the back of the church after we have concluded our worship. Please do stay and enjoy some fellowship together. I'd also like to thank our choir, who have come together this evening. Um, we've got members here of the Tenderden Singers and members of many of the parish churches from around our group of churches who have come together um, at four o'clock this afternoon. So I think you've done a really good job. Thank you so much, choir. Um, and thank you to Stephen and to Geoffrey uh, for the, all the work that they have put in to help and to lead us this evening. And so let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we beseech you, that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.